Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this doesn't work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up, guys. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There we go. They must have that cold that uh, E2 left around here. Hmm. So here we are, sitting 113 days, 11 hours, 5 minutes, and 20 seconds away from the kickoff of the 2019 season. And guys, I'm excited. Oh my goodness. Um, thank you guys for being the guinea pig last night where I uh, literally tore all of the computer system and everything else for our live streaming apart redid it and changed the television setup and everything else um, and I think I have all the bugs the software has been updated and all that and we did a test stream last night excuse me a dual stream uh, with Big Game James and if you don't know who Big Game James is check him out man Big Game knows his stuff man um, met him actually at the Eagles game um, in Dallas this year great guy love talking with him and we did a nice uh, live stream here and he'd live streamed on Facebook and everywhere else too. So it's kind of cool when we can kind of spread the stuff around and have great conversations about our Dallas Cowboys. And we got talking about some veterans that might be on the bubble because of some of the draft picks and unrestricted free agents. And when you look at this team, there's competition everywhere. Almost nobody should look comfortable um, because you got guys that are going to be fighting out, you know, like a cage match to the death for a roster spot on this team. And that goes for wide receivers, offensive linemen, uh, defensive line, defensive backs. There's a lot of young guys that want to get there. And when you hear guys like Connor McGovern, who's not happy with just being on the team, he wants to start. They're going to be pushing some of these veterans. Now, I'm happy to report that Travis Frederick... Travis Frederick, here's where I've got like a little connection with Travis Frederick. The very first draft that I went to was 2013. 2013, the draft is nothing like it is now. It was at Radio City Music Hall, and they only had 500 tickets for fans. You didn't have the whole NFL village and stuff like that. It was basically Music City Radio Hall. 500 fans go in, the draft goes on, it's on TV. And I remember, this is how small the draft was. I remember being outside Radio City Music Hall, um, sitting literally across the street by myself. There was a fountain there when the Dallas Cowboys picked Travis Frederick. And I remember it being announced because, again, there's no jumbotrons outside. There's no people around. This was 2013, just six years ago, and I know it seems like the Stone Ages. But the Cowboys traded with the San Francisco 49ers to move back a few places, and they drafted Travis Frederick. And, of course, you had, I remember Adam Schefter saying, well, the Cowboys picked up a center, so there's that. And people joked and said, what are they doing? You know, Jerry Jones... He needs to get a real GM because they have no idea what they're doing in drafting. They picked up a center in the first round? Are you kidding me? Well, I got to tell you, as good as Joe Looney played last year, Travis Frederick was still mixed. Missed. Really missed. But here's the good news. Travis Frederick says he's gotten full strength back. And that he feels great. And one of the other things that I feel, oh, God, I talked about this with Big Game James. I don't ever, ever in all the years that I have been watching football remember a team that did so much stuff together. They support each other completely. <coughs> I mean, I remember <coughs> Jason Witten having his camp, of course. Tony Romo came through. Terrence Newman was there. You know, yeah, that, that, that worked out. But it seems like everywhere, 
the Dallas Cowboys go deep. I don't care if it was going to a Mavericks basketball game. I don't care if it's going to a Stars hockey game. I don't care if it's going fishing. Next time, I just hope they get bigger boats because it kind of worries me when you start getting all those big offensive linemen on there. That boat's kind of small. But even going to North Carolina, to Duke, uh, going out with the uh, Special Forces guys. And then, of course, last night, Travis Frederick had his uh, hunger charity event. And I know Dak was there, Jeff Heath was there, the whole offensive line. These guys are there hanging out, supporting each other, and all doing great stuff. And that's where you start wondering, hmm, karma. Karma. There's the old saying that nice guys finish last. I don't believe that, though. I believe when you do good, that good things come back to you. It's a part of your character. And these guys have it. Now, if Travis Frederick is back and completely recover from the bar syndrome, you are adding a pro bowler, a pro bowler with experience, the field general, back into the Dallas Cowboys offense. That is one-fifth of the offensive line to go from a good player to a great player. If that doesn't pay dividend, if that isn't a game changer, I don't know what will be. To get a Connor Williams to have another year under him and some more mass. To have Lyle Collins start reading the tea leaves and knowing that this is a contract year. And make no mistake about it. Something happens during contract years for guys that they kind of play a little bit better. They reach a little harder. They make that catch that, you know, they don't have that alligator arm quite as much, you know. They're looking at that next paycheck, either here or auditioning for the next team. But make no mistake, they have to be all in. They will be all in. You got Zach Martin, who hurt his knee last year in training camp, who played with that thing all year messed up. And if there's one person that nobody's really talked much about is, if you think about Tyron Smith, and where he was last year this time. We were still hearing reports about him working out in California, working on his back um, and trying to get that thing right because he had to shut him down early. So now you're talking about Tyron Smith starting the season completely healthy, Zach Martin starting completely healthy, getting Travis Frederick back, Connor Williams, be it at guard or tackle, and maybe some young blood and Connor McGovern, or maybe Lyle Collins gets moved back to guard, whatever. That offensive line is going to go back where it was before, and that is one of the top offensive lines in football. And you can't help but think, ooh, boy. Now, one other thing we can add to that, too, is Jason Witten is a standout blocker as well. And I'm not going to sleep on Rico Gathers, because Rico Gathers, actually, he, he didn't get much publicity, but Rico was doing some fantastic blocking in there as well. They kind of screwed him up. They put on that weight, kind of negated his pass-catching ability. But I got a feeling, with Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore is going to give us a lot more than what we had last year. That's going to be my new motto, Kellen Moore. Yeah, we're going to bring some more. We got some more. Let's have some more. You know, we got all of those more things that we can have in there. But I got a feeling, because I've heard Jason Garrett mention Rico, he's still on the roster and things like that, that they may view him a little bit differently. I hope he just drops about 10 pounds and starts able to being able to run and catch again. He's learned how to block and how to use his body and things, but he needs to be given opportunities. And you can't just go ahead and do one pass to him, and everybody knows it's going to be a pass to him you got to use them a little bit more to lull people to sleep and then come back and start using them up. There's all kinds of different weapons on this team that were underutilized. And I'm looking at Kellen Moore, knowing that he's going to have a great offensive line, knowing that these guys, these five guys right here, can do most of your blocking when it comes to pass protection if we're doing quick enough stuff. 
that we start using those tight ends even more and we start developing different roles because tight ends are now the new weapon in the NFL and we need to start really developing that. All right, guys. Um, again, thank you guys for all the support and everything else. Um, we had a ball last night with Big Game James. Um, the setup here is going to work out really, really well, um, provided they don't do any more crazy updates that just kind of screw me over. Um, but we're going to keep on working every single day at getting better at this. So as always, friends, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. I'll see you soon.